Hello guys, my name is Piros Katius and today we're going to see how to use the DB context in the Blazor server application the proper way and uh, actually the one that Microsoft itself suggests. Let's go to our project. I have a Blazor server application here. In the entities folder I have a person with just an ID and a full name. And then in my persistent folder I have an app to be context and uh, an I app to be context, an interface. And then in my program.cs I register that app to be context. Uh, and also I register a people service. If we go to our people service, we have just one method, the get people async that returns all the people in the database. And I inject the IAPDB context in that people service. Now to our pages folder, I have a people page that just uh, displays some data of that uh, person type. And how do I do that? I get, I inject the people service and uh, I set that uh, people uh, visualization data to be the data that we get uh, back from that people service. I also pass a cancellation token, so I have a cancellation token source and uh, then I dispose it as I should with a cancellation token source. Now let's go and debug this. And as you can see, it runs as expected. Why shouldn't? That's the way you probably see in all the, or in most of uh, the examples on how to access data with Blazor server. But that's not actually the best practice and it uh, might end up uh, giving you a lot of problems. Actually, you shouldn't inject the DB context in any dependencies of a Razor component. That's uh, because the service lifetime of Blazor app, uh, more specifically the scope one, is not what uh, you are used to. I have another video that I explain uh, why with some examples too, but for now let's take Microsoft's word about that. So we can't use a DB context or entity framework at all. Well, we can, but we have to use a different approach. Instead of injecting the DB context itself, we're going to inject a DB context factory. Now let's configure that and see what it is. I'll go to my programs.cs and instead of calling the add DB context extension method, I will call the add DB context factory. Okay. Now let's uh, remove that I have to be context uh, registration. We're not going to need it. And now we have in the exact same way that we register at DB context, we register the DB context factory. You can uh, register both, but if you do, uh, be careful and use the same configuration for each of them. So now back to our people. Uh, service. We're going to remove that uh, app DB context since we're not going to use that, and instead we'll inject that uh, I DB context factory of app DB context. Let's call that context factory. Okay, and let's remove our constructor and let's write to generate another one for us. Okay, now. That uh, context factory, it has a method. Let's see that. That creates a DB context. So we are going to use that DB context to access our data. But that uh, DB context that uh, is created by context factory uh, is not managed by the application service provider. So we have to dispose that ourselves. The far context equals and let's use the async overload for that so uh, away using var context equals context factory dot create the context async and let's pass the cancellation token and uh, now and let's put that away in here too and now uh, that using statement 
will take care about disposing that uh, context so we are good to go that will work uh, fine but uh, then again here every time you have to do that in every method in that people service and maybe you don't maybe in that uh, people page you want to do some other operations instead of just reading the data as well for example maybe edit the data on the table or have a pop-up that creates a new person and you don't want to initialize a new db context each time well we can do that but uh, we have to take a different approach in how we dispose of that db context let's do that now we will actually use that uh, app db context so let's do that that will be our context and in here we will that will be a context with a t and in here we will take that context from the context factory so now we can use our uh, app db context let's make that read only as well read only and you could have a dispose i sing method in the i app db context the interface but for now we won't do that let's just use the app db context itself and now since uh, we need to dispose that uh, up to be context uh, that needs also to implement the i async disposable and let's implement the dispose async method and in here we need to dispose that context so context dot dispose async and also have that in our i build service so let's go and do that build members up and okay Okay, and I also need to return that, I'm sorry. So now back to our people page. Since uh, we use uh, the people service and now we need to dispose that, it's time we're done with it. So let's turn that to async disposable. And let that dispose async and the return type will be of value task. And now, and also make that async. Okay, and now that let's dispose that people service. Okay, now for that to work, I need to change one more thing. I need to go to my program CS file and in here register the people service as transient. Okay, the explanation has to do with lifetimes and in another video that I talk about them I, I use the same exact example and I, and I demonstrate why if we register that as scoped it will eventually throw an exception and will break our app. So if you're interested uh, go see that but anyway now we are good to go for that video. So. Let's put all that in test and see if our app still works. Okay, we go to our people, we get the people and actually let's put a breakpoint to our dispose async here in the people page and let's navigate to another page. We hit that breakpoint, let's go and put another one to the people service and as you can see uh, it will uh, hit that uh, context dispose async and let's take one step further step over that go to our memory try to add to search for that app context it's in here and as you can see the disposed field is true Okay, that's all I had for this video. Thank you for watching and have a nice one.